wonder if you think uh, we've seen a breakdown in public health regulation when it came to vaping in this country. Well, I think what you have right now, Carl, are two things kind of colliding, the perfect storm, if you will. We have this very mysterious illness that is killing people, and um, two of them are, two of the deaths are here in Kansas. Uh, about 530 people have gotten very ill, and the CDC doesn't still know exactly what's causing it, but they know it's very serious, and they have about 100 people on the investigation, according to Dr. Ann Shuket, their deputy director. So that's a very alarming, and to me, it's like a, a food outbreak where a voluntary recall would be a really smart thing to do until we figure out if it's the devices or the what exactly the ingredients are, but that there's that illness. At the same time, there's a real focus on Juul as the leading company in this marketplace who have, um, I would say, focused a lot of their marketing on kids, on flavors appealing to kids, on cool devices appealing to kids. And what you have is in 2000, about 28 percent of high schoolers smoked and tried their first cigarettes. That has gone down to 6 percent. Uh, in 2019, but unfortunately, we have 25 percent of high schoolers who now are vaping. Addicting kids to nicotine is never a good idea, and I think uh, that piece of it has to move much more quickly from the FDA, and, and I have some thoughts about where they could go, but I think these two issues are now coming together. So, Governor Baker, uh, has said no more vaping products at all in Massachusetts. I know Governor Kelly, our new governor, is looking with her Health and Human Services Secretary at what can be done as a, just a public safety outbreak here in Kansas. And I think that governors will follow suit very quickly. All right. You, you point to Jules marketing practices, and, and that's a fair point. But don't, don't people have the right to ask what were these products doing on the shelves without any research? Why are there still no restrictions on flavors or distribution or advertising when it comes to these products? Well, it's a great question, and I think it, it has been a breakdown. When they first came on the market, what Juul said to the FDA was, we are just like any other tobacco product. And, and since you now have regulatory authority over the tobacco products, gather some information on us. We we say we are safer and better and a good gateway for smokers out of smoking and into a less harmful product. Um, but they put their advertising as if they are really a smoking cessation product. And at that point, the FDA should have said very clearly, come in, prove you're safe, prove this works as smoking cessation, and we will then regulate you as a drug. Other Smoking cessation products are regulated as a drug. There's absolutely no reason that Juul, if that's their point of being on the market, if they are better and safer and actually a good smoking cessation tool, they should be a prescription medication. They should prove their efficacy. So you can't have it both ways. And I think the FDA has to move much more quickly. Secretary Sebelius, I, I wonder if there are unintended consequences. And what I mean by that is when you see a state like Massachusetts come out and do a, a full-fledged four-month ban on the sale of e-cigarettes and marijuana vaping products across the board, there are folks that are using those products, addicted to those products, are probably still going to try and find ways to get those products. And I wonder if it pushes them further into the black market, which... We know, according to reports, has been linked to some of those potentially to some of those uh, to some of those illnesses. I wonder if there is a risk of cracking down too hard, uh, given addiction and behaviors around addiction. I think that there is always that risk. The problem is until the CDC really identifies what is the ingredient, the product, the reason that these very serious illnesses and deaths are occurring, I think we need uh, some sort of ban to warn people that these are very dangerous, that you could die. And I, I am sympathetic to addictions, but there are other nicotine products that people can get which have proved safe and efficacious. And those are on the market. We know that um, serious addicts could get uh, those 
products right away. What we don't know is, is why people are dying and getting very ill from vaping. So that's got to be determined, and I think Governor Baker has taken a, a wise step to just say, until we know something more about this, uh, we need to urge people just not to use these products at all. We don't want to see more illness and death. At the same time, we have the longer-term regulatory issue where Juul is marketing itself as smoking cessation but has never gone through the rigor and the testing at the FDA that would allow them to approve smoking cessation efficacy and approve safety. And we know that kids are getting addicted to tobacco, I mean, to nicotine, at very high rates. So the products are really not great. They may be a step more safe than cigarettes, but that hasn't been proven yet. And in the meantime, they are being marketed like crazy with bubblegum flavor and very cool devices to lots of adolescents who were not going to start their first cigarette and now have moved to a different nicotine product.